Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here, and today I want to talk to you about using Melt in Pandas. Melt is one of these methods that allows us to reshape our data um, in such a way that it's easier to understand, easier to work with. Not always, not all data, but some types of data. So I'm going to import pandas as pd, and then I'm going to load up for my file name. This is SAT scores. These are a bunch of SAT scores that I got from the U.S. Department of Education a few years ago, so they're not super up to date. And then I can say df equals pd read csv of file name. And I get that, and we look at the data frame, and we see that it has 577 rows and 99 columns. That's a very, very wide data frame. And it's wide because we have lots of information about each combination of year and state code or year and state name, right? So for each year in the data set, we have the total math score, the number of test takers, the verbal score, and then we go into all sorts of other pieces of information about every, you know, the groups of students who took it. So score ranges between 600 and 700 math total, score range between 600 and 700 verbal females, and on, on, and on. Now, the thing is, this is a very wide data frame, and some of these pieces of information are actually sort of related to one another. For example, having the math and verbal in separate columns I can understand, but some types of analysis might actually be easier if they're in the same column. But if they're in the same column, they're gonna get mixed up, right? Oh, if they're in the same column, then I'm gonna to need to have a separate column indicating whether it's math or verbal. In other words, I want to take this wide data frame and turn into a longer data frame, keeping the same data. How am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna use melt. You probably figured that out. So first of all, I'm just gonna reduce the size of this data frame. I'm gonna say read CSV file name. And then I'm gonna say use calls. I'm just gonna get a bunch of them. So we're gonna say year and state code. And we'll say here total math. And we'll say here total test takers. And then we'll finally say total verbal. Okay, so now I have these columns, I read it in, we look at the DF, and look at this, it's the same data as before, just chopped off, like I only have five of the columns rather than all, what was it, 99 columns we had before. So how can melt help me? Well, I can say df.melt, good starting point, and then I have to choose two different things. I have to choose which of these columns, which of these basically categorical columns is going to be sort of my linchpin. What am I going to um, keep things steady on? I'm gonna say here, year. So ID call ID vars equals year. And so I want to make sure that for each year, I'm going to have, well, I'm going to have what? I'm going to say then, uh, let's just look this up. Uh, I want the uh, value vars. Sorry, I always forget the name. Value vars equals, and let's say here, a list of total math and total test. Actually, let's say total verbal. So what's going to happen? Watch this. I now get a new data frame back and look at how it sort of was rejiggered. The year remains the same, 2005 at the beginning, 2015 at the end. But now we have a new column variable and variable is going to be either the name of this column, total math, or the name of this column, total ver verbal. Why? Because those are what I said I want to have in the value vars. In other words, we've compressed these two columns into a single column. And how do we then make sure that we can sort of distinguish between what came from total math and what came from total verbal? Oh, well, then we've got to have this extra column variable that says what it is. Now, you might be saying, that's pretty dumb to call these columns variable and verbal, uh, variable and value. And you're right. So I can call, I can say var name equals, and let's say subject. And then we can say value name equals, and we'll say here score. And now, Look at this, instead of using variable and value, now we've actually given names to these columns. So now we have year and subject and score, and now I can start doing all sorts of other stuff with it. But wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. We've got a whole lot of rows now in 2005 for total math and a whole bunch of rows for total verbal. Um, don't we want to maybe distinguish between the different states here? And we did have that information. If we go back up to the original data frame, you can see we have year and state code. So it might be nice to keep track of that as well. Well, I can redo my, uh, uh, my query here. And here, my rule of thumb comes into play once again. Just about anywhere in Pandas that you can use a string to describe one column, you can use a list of strings to describe several columns. So I'm going to say here, open up a list, year and state code. 
and the rest will stay the same. And now look what happens. Now I have year and state code. These are going to be sort of the pivots that we use. Pivot is a bad word to use here because it's like related but not the same thing. So we're going to have a separate row here for 2005 and Alabama, 2005 and Alaska, 2005 and Arizona, and so on and so forth. And then for each one of these, we're going to have either math, well, we're going to have math and verbal. In fact, if I were to say here now, let's just grab this. And now if I say, let's make this a little more complicated here, I'll do it as uh, um, method uh, um, chaining. So I'm going to say now dot lock, uh, and we'll say lambda df, df of, and we'll say here state code equals equals, let's just say al, the first one. And so now if we have this, look at this. We now have all of the rows with Alabama throughout all the years, and we have, and in fact, we can now do a sort values on, and we'll do first on year, and then state code. And you'll see then we have 2005 math, 2005 verbal, 2006 math, 2006 verbal, and so on and so forth. These numbers on the left here are just the index from the data frame that we got after all the melting and the locking and lambding and so forth. All right, so you see then that we have the same data as before, but now we can play with it more easily. Now you could say, well, wait a second, if I've got this, wouldn't it be nice maybe to separate it out into columns? Wouldn't it be nice for me to have like, instead of having subject here, math, verbal, math, verbal, math, verbal, maybe I actually want to separate that out. And if you're saying that, you're first of all undoing all the hard work that we've done, but second of all, you're describing a pivot table. That's right. So I can take all of this thing and I can just say, pivot and we'll say index equals and we'll say here uh year actually we'll say here year and state code and then we'll say here columns equals and then we're going to say subject and then we're going to say values equals and these are score and we do this and look what we get we've basically reconstructed what we had before and that's because pivot and melt are inverses of one another. Now, those of you who've been following me for a while know that I generally like to use the pivot table method, not the pivot method. Then the reason I usually like to do that is because pivot table is just much more sort of flexible and much more powerful. But pivot here is sort of a pure uh, reverse of melt. It's not gonna perform any aggregation methods. It's just gonna take the things and rejigger them and put them into a new format. The fact that we can move our data around, make it wider, make it longer, um, grab different columns, grab different rows, this is what makes Pandas so powerful and useful. And this is, um, this is just like another tool in our toolbox. We want to understand our data better. So I hope that this helped you to understand Melt and, by the way, also Pivot. I hope that this gives you some more insights and, as I said, more tools in your toolbox for analyzing data. Stick around for lots more videos about Python and Pandas like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. I love reading your comments and responding to them, and I will see you soon right here.